I don't know if you saw the Tucker Carlson um, uh, little mini monologue that he put online yesterday. Let's play this here. Good evening, it's Tucker Carlson. One of the first things you realize when you step outside the noise for a few days is how many genuinely nice people there are in this country, kind and decent people, people who really care about what's true, and a bunch of hilarious people also, a lot of those. It's gotta be the majority of the population, even now. So that's heartening. The other thing you notice when you take a little time off is how unbelievably stupid most of the debates you see on television are. They're completely irrelevant. They mean nothing. In five years, we won't even remember that we had them. Trust me, as someone who's participated. And yet at the same time, and this is the amazing thing, the undeniably big topics, the ones that will define our future, get virtually no discussion at all. War, civil liberties, emerging science, demographic change, corporate power, natural resources. When was the last time you heard a legitimate debate about any of those issues? It's been a long time. Debates like that are not permitted in American media. Both political parties and their donors have reached consensus on what benefits them, and they actively collude to shut down any conversation about it. Suddenly, the United States looks very much like a one-party state. That's a depressing realization, but it's not permanent. Our current orthodoxies won't last. They're brain dead. Nobody actually believes them. Hardly anyone's life is improved by them. This moment is too inherently ridiculous to continue, and so it won't. The people in charge know this. That's why they're hysterical and aggressive. They're afraid. They've given up persuasion. They're resorting to force. But it won't work. When honest people say what's true, calmly and without embarrassment, they become powerful. At the same time, the liars who've been trying to silence them shrink, and they become weaker. That's the iron law of the universe. True things prevail. Where can you still find Americans saying true things? There aren't many places left, but there are some, and that's enough. As long as you can hear the words, there is hope. That is a great, uh, hey, I'm not dead. I haven't disappeared and nobody's shutting me up uh, message from Tucker Carlson it would be more effective if he wasn't such a Nazi, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's the only hole only. in the message. God, doesn't sound like a Nazi. You know, he likes freeways. You know who invented the freeway? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. It's all yeah. coming together now, Glenn. <laughs> it's all coming together. Yeah. yeah. The tone of that, I think, is really great. You know? I mean, it's, I know it, it is. You know, you, you see that and you see... It's, that's the happy warrior type of thing, right? Where, like, he's not backing down. He's not leaving his foundations or his principles. But he's and, also smiling, yeah. you know, and enjoying life a little bit. Right. Well, of course, you know, you're more of that. A hundred million dollars and they say, get out and you're not going to work <laughs> Where? for it. Why can't I find that job? I need the job. I want that job. Right. I think everyone should have a chance mm -hmm. at those jobs. Right. A job that pays you multiple millions of dollars to not do the job. That's the job I want. Right. I'm sick of doing the job. I am sick of living in this country that promises all these great things. Yeah. Oh, you can do it. You can achieve. When we have to work... For our money, I want to work a year and get paid for four. Yes. Now, we're not working hard or doing a real job, of course. We should no. know that. But still, <laughs> I, still, I want no work and lots of money. Where's that job? <laughs> Low on the work side, high on the money side. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, you could argue we probably already have that job, but I want yeah. one that's even more <laughs> low on the work side. And high on the money you side. Know, I love that he was in his golf cart with his wife, and they're at his house in Florida, and they're zipping around, and they're like, he looks so happy. Of course. <laughs> he's of in course he's happy. They paid him not to work, and it looks like he can work anyway. Yeah. His family is now set for generations. While you, while you don't get that deal, I'm here for you. I say we sue all of our comp companies. So, wait a minute. This would work in my... <laughs> no, you don't want this. I don't want this. You, we need to be able to work a year and get paid for four. I'm, that's, I mean, if I'm president, that's my slogan. Uh, it would probably work in this area. Oh, it, 
It would. Let me let me ask you. This. You know Tucker better. I mean, other than me, you know, talking to him briefly in our interviews, I don't, I've never talked to Tucker Carlson in my life. Do you? What kind of person is he? Is he the person that's going to be happy taking a giant paycheck and and hanging out on the beach? No. Or is he the type of person who's going to want to? No, he's the type of guy. Like I, I couldn't. If some, if I was in his situation, then they said, "Hey, we're going to pay out your contract." I would say, "Fine," but there is. There's no non-compete. There's nothing. I get to do what I want. Otherwise, I'm going to work for you because I'm going to honor my contract. I could not go on the beach and waste four years. And I, he's not like that either. You see what he's setting up mm. here? He's setting up a different kind of show, a, a show where he takes big issues and debates them. That's that's where he's headed. Yeah, looking for something a little bit more substantial, which is yeah. great. It is something we really need. I, I will say it really connects when he's talking about that thing where we have these debates and then five years later we don't re even remember they happened. It's I mean, so true. It's, we, it was, we waste so much time on nonsense. It's really, really crazy because when, you know, all the conventional wisdom has always been, oh, online, people want it in three minutes. Yeah. No more than three minutes. Explain Joe Rogan. Explain this podcast. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, people will listen to this podcast every day for three hours. I, I mean, I don't know how you do it. I have to do it. But then if I had to listen to it, too, that'd be six hours of my day. And I just couldn't handle it, no matter what they pay, because I'm still working four other days. Right. That's a lot. That's a lot of work. Yeah. But, I mean, I really, I don't know how people have the time, but they're looking for Longer form, intelligent questioning. And honest questioning. I, and I, look, we try to do that every day here. Um, but I do think that as a society, certainly on cable news, you see a lot of this happening where you're just, I mean, he even said it. I, I've even participated in it. Of course, we have as well. Like yeah. e you, everybody has. But it, it is something that we could fix. You know, and I think that's and what people want. And it's being fixed. Yeah, it is. It's sorting itself out. Um, it's just the it's those damn commies <laughs> that are trying to prop up the old system that is worthless. They say it's about progress. No, it's not. They're propping up all the old systems.